What's up, friends of the good mood? This is Manny, and welcome to the Fenrir that simply cannot lose. It's impossible. Yuji and Yuangji, or whatever those weapons called, with unstable conduit, uh, Kestrel drone, Bernadette Wolf for the legendary pilot, uh, and the Kestrel. No, the roulette battleship with a double durability extender that allows you to basically end up with more than a million HP on a Fenrir if you do a good job, which you're definitely gonna do with these weapons and this much HP and resistance. You have two medium and a heavy weapon, that's plenty of firepower. You're near impossible to get destroyed by regular robots. The only thing that really can hurt you hard is Titans and of course the new Reaper weapon that goes through all resistances. Uh, also Ghost Volt and so on, but people don't really use that, so um, it would be more the danger with the Reaper, I guess. Uh, but this thing just can't lose unless you have really that Reaper guy uh, trying to focus you out. Um, you have the firepower of a Titan, pretty much, uh, with these lasers, up to, uh, I think, 800 meters range, which is just nuts. Um, then on the same, at the same time, you recharge that firepower relatively fast, uh, and uh, yeah, you, you're ending up with, um, 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 with a lot of damage output and effectiveness. However, keep in mind, right now, there is a new nerf being introduced to these weapons right here, where the um, cool... Uh, the, no, the, the heat up goes, I think, 30% faster or something like this. So you will lose firepower while firing at the enemy quicker. Does that mean the weapon will be weak? No. The we weapon will still perform really well and still deal a lot of damage. Not quite, however, how you're seeing it here. The, what you see here will be a little more powerful or somewhat more powerful than what the weapon will probably do in the future, and I should say that right here because I just read, I first recorded this gameplay, thought of this topic, and then I read, oh, now they're gonna nerf the weapons. Uh, it's not a surprise because all the new things that are too powerful are being nerfed all the time. That same will happen with, um, with the Reaper. Same will happen with the Rook Titan. We already know it. It's basically common knowledge at this point that this is how this business operates. Uh, it's not a cool thing because it always means that you're going to be unhappy because whatever you invest in is only a temporarily fun thing and it will later be weaker. Uh, it's like uh, the argument you always guys you always say in the comments is like what if I buy a car and then uh, after two years or a year the company who made the car says, okay, uh, now the car has been on the market for long enough, it has been interesting for long enough, so now we're gonna rip out your radio and your audio system and uh, the navigation system and just put it in the la latest versions of our car. So yeah, sorry, uh, we're gonna just, just take that from you now. Uh, enjoy the, uh, the rest of the car. Um, that, that is basically what you guys often say in the comments, and I understand where that point comes from, because it's... It's, that's what it basically is in War Robots. It's insane. It's ridiculous. How can this model even exist on the market? How can this even be allowed to happen? That a, a game developer or, or some kind of th a company that offers a product is able to take your product and basically make it half as good later down the line. How is that even allowed to happen? You know, how, how do we get there? It's crazy. In the mobile gaming industry, has such a weird niche in which somehow they can do things that would be, would otherwise be completely unacceptable in every other line of life uh, or or business. It, it, it's nuts. But this is what we have to deal with in this weird situ in this weird industry. At least for now. I, I maybe it will um, be more regulated down the uh, in the future. I'm assuming it will be because the power and the influence of this market grows every day, and uh, so. I'm assuming that it will get um, more regulated down the line, but right now it seems to be so stupid and ridiculous. Especially, did you know the video about the random, the, the luck, the ultimate luck, ultimate duck up that I call it, where they throw in like a loot box system that is completely unacceptable? How can this even exist? Anyways, right, right now we're getting shot at by a scorpion who jumped on me, a Capri, uh, uh, an Erebus, I think, there in the distance, and uh, whatever else the enemy can team bring up with. Um, I'm not alone here, I do have some support from my team, which is good. Uh, now there's another Harpy and a Seraph coming in, and they all want to have a piece of me. Um, there's a, uh, a Mars robot who thought he can cross the open plains, but sorry bro, this is where my Fenrir covers, you know? So you're not gonna cross that. And this is the crazy thing about these weapons, is that this much damage output with this much range, of course it needs to be nerfed. 
And of course, they will eventually nerf it once enough people have been investing into this weapon. Um, and, uh, because it's too powerful from the moment it came into the game, it was game breaking. This is every time how it happens in the game. Something new enters the game, it's way too good and it's literally game breakingly good. Uh, and this is what it, apparently, according to Pixonic's thoughts, that's how it needs to be for people to be enough interested in buying uh, it, in it to, to spend. It must be game breakingly broken before so that people will decide to invest into it. Apparently that's the thought process of Pixonic. I'm not in this line of business, but I believe if something is just a little more powerful and in new and interesting, people will be interested in it as well. Perhaps it adds something different or new, a new mechanic that doesn't necessarily, isn't necessarily overpowered, but it's interesting and fun. You know, for example, as such as these weapons right here, it's a great example. These uh, thermites are absolutely fun. They're a trolling weapon. You can troll the enemy with it. Uh, you can do something that is very special that other weapons can't do. And the weapon does that with, without being overpowered. In fact, it's heavily underpowered right now. But there is a nerf, no, a buff being introduced for the vortex category weapons with finally adding splash damage and therefore, depending on how much splash it is, fixing the inaccurately pr inaccuracy problem you have. But you see here how helpless I am against this nether with my thermites. He just dashes when I shoot and the, the, the shot goes nowhere. Because no splash damage, zero accuracy, no damage. So these weapons really need that. And then they offer something special that people want because it's special, it's trollish and it's fun without being overpowered. You see, so in my opinion, things don't always have to be game breaking to be interesting to players to get. You just have to be creative and come up with something new. With, which I understand is not so easy now because this game is on the market for so long. How many more new things can you come up with? But at the same time, that's your job, Pixar. That's what you get paid for, is to make an interesting game, to keep it fun. That's what your money comes from. It's not just because you're selling stuff, make it too good and too powerful and then nerf it later. No, you're getting paid for creating and coming up with cool ideas. Yeah, that's a big part of it. Same as you did when you started War Robots, you came up with a cool idea, you know, that's what paid. And uh, you gotta, you gotta focus more on that rather than focusing on game-breaking uh, things that obviously and of course require a subsequent nerf right after uh, because they are in fact game-breaking. That's literally the definition uh, of how they are. And um, yeah. So just again, food for thought, right? Uh, for Pixie here. Um, and at the same time, uh, also for us to, um, you know, to peace of mind, I guess, right? It's it's out there, it's said. Yes, we were able to get rid of our, um, our mood and we were able to voice our concerns, our unhappiness. Um, and, uh, and as so, maybe it's good for both of us. But at the same time, uh, I do not just want to show this and to discuss this. I also want to show you this Fenrir. So let's get back into that time kind of topic. Um, and that Fenrir is and always was a powerful beast. And the Fenrir is even more powerful ever since Bernadette Wolf entered the ring because she adds something immensely powerful to it, which is resistance. And because that energy shield is often being bypassed, that energy shield that the Fenrir itself, without the uh, legendary pilot, has, is not powerful enough to literally to actually carry the Fenrir to success because it's only like 60k and that's often it's like one shot from a weapon or something you know so it's not really the energy shield is also it's almost useless at this point you really need to have Bernadette Wolf and when you have her then the Fenrir becomes an immense beast and ever, everything that has resistance benefits more and more from it the more HP you throw into the ring, right? So when we have a level 1 Fenrir with Bernadette Wolf, it wouldn't work very well. Uh, it needs to get as much possible hit points as possible because, you know, depending percentage based off your HP, that's what the bonus comes from from your resistance. So when you have a lot of HP like we have with a 600,000 base HP Fenrir here, obviously you run into an immense amount of uh, durability altogether when you consider how much the enemy has to deal to you damage to kill that Fenrir. It's nuts. And so really the Fenrir is one of those, it's kind of like um, like an anomaly. Similar to the 
uh, the Ravana, right? The Nam Ravana also is kind of, I like to call it the anomaly because normally things that are older are no longer re relevant. You see one example here, the Aochun. God, you guys often ask for buffs for the Aochun. I can't even count how many of you guys tell me, please, man, it say something about the Aochun. It's it's the best of the dragon robots, and it's a it ha it's like it's an important part of the game. Make it good again. They need to buff it. They need to do this and this, and um. Yeah, you guys are absolutely right. You, it needs to, and there's many things like it that need that. Um, and this is what makes the Ravana and um, kind of the Fenrir also this anomaly. These things are just great still, and they have never been bad. And uh, and I hopefully they will never be bad, and I hopefully Pixonic will never change something about it. I also don't think they will, and also some people say, oh, now he said it, now they will do it. I don't think that's how it works, you know? If I express gratitude for Pixonic to not have destroyed the Ravana or Fenrir, the, the next thing they will do is not going to do just that. You know, that would be pretty counterproductive. Because that means I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say positive things anymore about the game when I when I get the feeling that when I say it, they're gonna destroy it right after, you know? Um so if that's not how that's not how it happens. However, I did say that the mol uh, that the Vortex Thermite Aphid need freaking splash damage. They need it, so you finally have at least no worry with physical shields. The energy shields are still a pain in the butt, but uh, energy sh uh, physical shields at least aren't because you have now splash damage. So you can use it, for example, a little bit against a Rook Titan, which we're all going to have a big problem with. I can tell you this much already. But you can use Thermite Vortex, uh, Bull of Akistan, if it, you know, with splash damage, you can use it against it a little bit and try to be tricky. Um, and so we need that. And they did it! They did it! They're giving Vortex splash damage now. And um, and perhaps even, and I hope, they would also rework a little bit on the accuracy. Um, and I, I, I'm really hoping that the splash damage is not just for Vortex, also for Thermite and Aphid, because they need it just as much, obviously. Same category, same weaknesses. Um, and uh, yeah, so that is great. So, not, so many things we say here, and I do for a fact know that Pixonic watches these videos. I'm not sure if they watch every video from every content creator, but I know they watch my videos. Uh, they have said this to me many times that they do watch them. And uh, when I say something that is really bad, I sometimes feel bad because I know they will see it. At the same time, I often know that this critics is justified and it just needs to be said. So it's always a bit of a difficult thing for me to, uh, to say it because at the same time, I know um, there are a lot of people trying to do their best in Pixonic, but of course it's, you know, it's a business and there is these people who have the say when it comes to making money and uh, that uh, that most of the time doesn't really go hand in hand with what our community really has uh, has you know expects to come from or expects from our game war robots i'm saying our game it's pixonic's game but it's at the end of the day it's ours just as much because we're the ones who make all this possible by playing it paying it and so on right so it is kind of our game and so of course i feel like our demands are not just completely unjustified some of the times and uh, again, back to the anomaly, R Ravana Fenrir are somehow still immensely powerful, and they had that has never changed. And I'm glad for this, and I think there should be more video uh, robots like this. And I think you guys are right, and the Aochun should be the best and the strongest dragon robot, and uh, not be forgotten and gathering dust, but instead be fun. People should enjoy having their Aochuns, and it should be better than it is right now. Um, it is so weak compared to all the other a li little bit more newer items, right? So yeah, for now, that's uh, that's it. O what I wanted to say and what I wanted to show, keep in mind, um, these weapons have been nerfed. They, they are no longer just as powerful as they were here. At the same time, that nerf, it was coming. We had it coming. We all know it was coming because uh, this, these weapons way overperform for uh, for the range and the damage they do and how easily they do it. But that's not our fault and the fault of those who invest in it. It's the fault of, of course, the game development uh, where they make weapons like this. And I and I wish it wasn't like this. I wish it wasn't. It didn't have to be too powerful every time in the beginning. Anyways, for now, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Manny signing off. Bye-bye.